what's next? It's a question that I believe some of you are asking right now. What's next? What am I going to do about my life? Where am I going to go? What is the next project? What is the next move? What is the next issue, the next job, the next relationship, the next child, the next place to eat, <laughs> the next place to go? I don't know about you, but this is a question I have to face a lot of times. Sometimes it's as simple as, what's next after I watch this movie? That's very simple. <laughs> I just go to sleep. That's next. But there are times when what's next is not so simple because you do not know where to go. I believe that some of us are on Jalan, what's next, and you don't know where to turn next. You're asking yourself, what's next that I'm now jobless? You're saying, what's next since I have no relationship anymore? You're saying to yourself, what's next since my finances have failed me? What's next after college? For some of you who have just graduated high school, you're asking, what's the next thing for me? And some of you cannot sleep at night because you're wondering, what is next? What am I going to do about my situation? So I have designed this series to help you. To help me, <laughs> because I also want to know a lot of times what is next. And so in this series, I don't want to give you anxiety. I just want to give you varieties of options that you can use when you're facing what's next. And so what we're going to do for the next couple of weeks is particularly, listen to this, listen to this. this you got to take this to the bank, is how to discern God's leading and direction for your life when you don't know what's next. I'll begin our series this morning in Joshua. I'm going to ask you one more time to stand with me as we look at Joshua chapter 1. And I just want to consider a few verses. So please stand with me as we read the word together this morning. Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 1. I've put it on the screen there and you can follow along if your knees work and you don't have back aches and and all the other kind of aches you know please join me in standing i i, I see you i see you if i can read tell me pastor read on come on now you can do better than that pastor read on let's do this and it's on the screen, so I've made it a lot easier for you. Notice what it says. <clears throat> After the death of Moses. There it is. What's next? After the death of Moses. The servant of the Lord. The Lord said to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant. I want you to notice something right here. It's not what I'm preaching about, but there is a death. But God is present. Sometimes we wonder if God is available, if God is present, when we're asking what's next. Here the Bible says, right after the death of Moses, God is right there. And I do not know what has died in your life, but God is right there. Notice what it says in the next verse. And this is God speaking. He says, Moses, my servant, is dead. In other words, God is saying to you, I know what's going on. <laughs> Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Oh, man, I'm going to have fun with this. Arise, go over this Jordan. Because sometimes when something has died and you want to know what's next, you got to arise and cross over. Arise, go over this Jordan, you and all of these people into the land that I'm giving to them, to the people of Israel. Notice what God says. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, 
I have given to you just as I promised to Moses. So what I see is that Joshua, Brother Clint, was qualified for next. He was qualified for next. Let us pray. Father God, speak to us today. We, we, we need something from you. We need encouragement. We need you to lift us up. This I humbly pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Here it is at the very beginning. Life often circulates around next. And I chose our text today because it is a seedbed of next. After. That is a cousin of next. <laughs> After I eat. Then I'm going to pray if you pray. After I pray, then I'm going to practice. After I practice, then I'm going to, to go to the warung or I'm going to go to the masseuse so or whatever you do after. And life <laughs> lives on next. And I know some of you are thinking about the next thing. Because it's important to do that, Stephanie. Because life and time doesn't wait for you. I don't know about you, but right now we are <laughs> racing against time. It's to the next second. To the next minute. To the next hour. To the next day. To the next week. To the next month. To the next year. To the next decade. And you are counting the years. You are counting the time. And you are saying, yes, I got to go to the next thing. Because time ain't waiting for me. Time is not holding a seat for me. Time is not waiting for me to get ready. Time is moving. And that's why you are anxious today. Because you are thinking about the time. You Thinking about your age, you, you, you're thinking about your, 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 your career, you, you're thinking about graduating, you're thinking about all the things that are time constrained. Amen, somebody. I have learned something, Brother Sam, that in life we have indicators of next. Uh, when you watch movies, there is this line a lot of times, the end. <laughs> The end tells you it's time to watch the next movie. Or if you're a good student, you say, you know what, it's not time to watch a movie now. Let me go and study. Amen, somebody. So the, the end tells you, hey, hey uh, Brother Jeff, I got to watch the next movie. But also, you know, Instagram has this 24-hour cycle when you post your story. And after the 24-hour cycle, says Jared, it tells you, I need the next story. And some of you, Instagram, in fact, you bombard your storyline with quotes and quotes and quotes. Sometimes you can spend an hour looking at somebody's story. They, they, they tell you everything about their life. But you understand that an Instagram story, once it ends, requires you to give the next story. Some of you, when you, you're in Starbucks and... You've drunk your Java chips or whatever you like, Frappuccino or Cappuccino, all the chinos out there. You know, you know what I mean? When you've drunk that, you're, you're, it's empty, and then the cup is empty. It's telling you it's time for the next cup, for the next drink. And in our text, we have an indicator of next, the death of Moses. And I have learned that often death indicates next. Death will often tell you it's time to move on. It is time to go to the next step. It is not time to hang around here. It is not time to circulate here. It is time... To go, and you understand that Moses was a giant of a man. He he was a giant of giants. He was Goliath, Goliath times ten. Because the text says that because of his greatness, because of his power, because of his impact on a nation, the nation cried for him for thirty days. Thirty days crying for Moses, 
And notice why they did that. Because Moses was unlike any other prophet. Because Moses knew the Lord face to face. Moses was a kind of brother. If you went to him and you said, what is God thinking today? He could tell you. What did God drink today? He could tell you. What did God post today? He could tell you because Moses could see God face to face. And that man died. Which tells me, no matter how great you are, no matter how strong you are, no matter how think you got it going on, death is still coming. Those of you who understood that said amen. We should all say amen because we got to be humble, y'all. Because some of us are too proud. Because we think we're going to live forever. We think we're going to be young forever. We think that, you know, this thing is going to touch us. When we, we see people uh, suffering, we say, that that's them. That's not going to come to me. But no, if Moses can die, you and I can also die. And here, the people are weeping for Moses. And rightfully so. And let me just say this. When something has died, it's okay to cry. Amen. It's okay to be sad. It's okay to mourn. Because God didn't create us to be robots. He made us with feelings. We can touch, we can taste, we can feel. And so when something has died, please do not pass the moment without mourning for it properly. There's got to be a season where you mourn. There's got to be a season when... You ain't on IG, you're mourning. There's got to be a season when you are not out there going out and meeting friends. There's got to be a time when you say, you know what, I am in pain right now. I'm in a challenge right now. I'm in a struggle right now. Therefore, I'm going to make sure that I heal properly from this situation so that I do not go into my next season in pain. I'm healed. I'm sorted. Because that's dangerous. When you don't deal with your pain. So the people dealt with their pain for 30 days. You ain't got to weep forever. There's got to come a day when you say, you know what? I'm done weeping. I'm done mourning. I'm going to move on with my life. But here is the good news, Sister Lydia. The death of Moses created an opportunity for next. And I want somebody to understand that though death cuts like a knife, it is often a kite to next. Because the death of Moses allowed Joshua to lead. The death of Moses allowed the people of Israel to enter the promised land. The death of Moses allowed the people to say, you know what, we we, we don't have to live life like we have no hope. We can carry on even if our leader has died. And that's what I want somebody to understand today. That even if it has died, even he or she has died, it doesn't mean that you got to stay. It simply means that God is trying to elevate you. God is trying to take you to the next phase in your life. It may be a loved one. You don't know what you're going to do. You don't know how you're going to handle it. But understand that God has a plan. It may be a dream that you had. But you now realize I don't have the money. I don't have the expertise. And I don't have the age. Therefore I have to let this thing die. It may be your finances. You don't know what you're going to do. When you look at your bank account. All you see are zeros. And you don't feel like a hero. And you feel like zero. <laughs> and dead. Maybe for you, it's an iPhone that you love. You try to charge it. It started to charge, but then all of a sudden, mati. <laughs> it's dead. It's that favorite car that, that, that you liked. And then you took it to the mechanic and the mechanic said, uh, my brother, this is the 50th time that you brought this car here. I think it's time for a new one. 
Because we have our favorite shoes, our favorite shirt, our favorite person, our favorite place, our favorite this and that. And sometimes when it dies, we cling on to it with dear life and we don't want to let go. But sometimes when it has died, God is saying, move. It's time for next. Because when Joshua died, it gave God, Sister Valerie, the opportunity to talk to Joshua. God could not talk to Joshua unless Moses had died. And God will not be able to do some things in your life until you are willing to accept what has died. God cannot promote some of us because we're still stuck on the position we wanted. Some of us are not living, are not living our best life because we thought our best life is in America and in Australia and in New Zealand. But here you're in Indo. Some of us are struggling in a relationship because all we're doing is comparing the person we are with with the one that was. And because we're unwilling to accept what has died, God is not able to speak to us about what he's supposed to do next in our lives. Brother and sister, it's time that you embrace what has died. And that's not a knock on you. That's not God saying he doesn't love you. That's not God saying you are sinful or, or you're, 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 you're wicked. No, it's God saying, I want to free you. I want to move you. I want to strengthen you. Amen, somebody. So the death of Moses gave God an opportunity to speak to Joshua. You, you, you know there is something here, Harry, that I've learned that's really frustrating. Do you know that some of your products, you cannot replace the battery? AirPods, Inca, uh, there are a few others. You cannot replace the battery, battery. And you know why that is so? Because Apple has figured out, if I do not, if, if we do not force consumers to buy our products, they will keep their product forever. <laughs> so we have to find a way to make the product die. So that once it has died, they can go and buy a new one. That is why there's an iPhone 13. I think it's iPhone 13 now. Next year is going to be, this year's iPhone 14. Hey, I can't even keep, I'm still stuck on 11. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm like, I'm good with, I'm good right here. You know what I mean? But there's going to come a time when that iPhone ain't going to work anymore. Because in the, the gadget, manufacturers have put a death date. They have already programmed you for next. <laughs> you don't know that. I'm telling you this right now. When you buy whatever you're going to buy next, know that at some point it's going to die because they want you to get the next one. I don't like this gimmick because I like to save money. I don't like to just update and all that. I don't like it. But for me, it tells me something. That the moment it dies, you're able to get something nicer. <laughs> the moment it dies, you're able to get something uh, cuter. Something that is more upgraded. Something that is more updated. And here is my story for somebody. When you accept the death date, when you accept what has died, you're going to do something nicer. Something better. Something greater. God is trying to update and upgrade and make you better. Amen, somebody? So accept. I know it's painful. I know it's difficult. But God has something nicer. And let me just put it like this. Nicer may not always mean a new car. It may not always mean a new home. Or a new pair of shoes. Or a new person. Nicer may mean a new attitude. Amen? But some of us, the, our attitude on life Hey, we complain about everything and everyone. The world is against us. And God is trying to say, you know what? I want that attitude to die so that you can have a more positive outlook. 
Some of, some of y'all, every morning you, you get up, you're jumping on the scale, weigh, weighing yourself and, and, and doing intermittent fasting and all this other stuff because you're trying to look good. And you're not happy because the weight ain't going as much as it should be going. And God is saying, are you healthy? Are you sleeping well? Are you eating on time? Are you having good relationships? Perhaps if you focus on that, the weight may go off. So for some of us, NISA is learning to pray daily with your family. For some of us, NISA is, Marta Buck, you and I are not going to talk as much and relate as much. Magnum ice cream, you and I, we got to make a distance. We got to break this. Uh-huh, I hear you. So whenever something has died, consider that as an opportunity for something nicer. And here it is. Let me drop it on you. It's important that you do not focus on next, but you ensure that you are qualified for next. Now, now watch this. God is speaking to, Moses, to, to Joshua. Moses is gone. He's speaking to Joshua. He says, Moses, my servant, is dead. D-E-A-D. Dead. Mati. In Hebrew, uh, mut. Now, my, now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all these people, into the land that I'm giving to them, to the people of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given to you just as I promised to Moses. When I read this text, listen to me, I see God looking at a man who is qualified. God chooses Joshua because he's qualified. God said, I need a man. And he looked around. He looked at the priest bringing a lamb to the, uh, to the temple, a holy man, but not the right man. God looked around in the camp of Israel. He saw a man who had a lot of cattle, who had a lot of sheep. He had a lot of servants, but God says, not the right man. But then when God looked at Joshua, oh, this young man, he has been with Moses. He has been fighting the Amalekites. He has been at the mountain of God. He has seen how Moses did it. I think this is a man who is qualified for next. So, so don't focus on next, Brother Adriel. Focus on being qualified for next. Now, you and I understand Qualification very well. When you want nasi goreng, you go to the war room because the war room is qualified <laughs> to give you the best nasi goreng. In fact, I've learned that the best nasi goreng is not in the restaurant. You got to go to the war room. You know what I mean? That's Indonesia special. <laughs> But you and I know if there's an ache in your back, if there's an ache in your head, you don't go to the war room. You go to the doctor because the war room is not qualified to handle your pain. Are you feeling what I'm saying? And so if, if let's put it like this. If God was to look at you, would you be qualified? I know you want the promotion. Are you qualified? I know you want to grow your bank account. Are you qualified? You want to have kids. Are you qualified? You want to walk down the aisle. Are you qualified? You want to preach. Are you qualified? You want, are you qualified? God is not interested in next. God is interested in people who are qualified for next. You see, I believe, like a red, red light, God may stop your next move because you're not qualified for next. And I want to help somebody right here and liberate somebody because some of you are frustrated. God ain't answering my prayers. I've been fasting all night. I've been talking to, 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 to the pastor. I've been getting counseling, but my situation is not changing. Perhaps what you need to think about is, whatever I'm wanting, am I ready for that? And it could be God's mercy for me 
not to run the traffic and get hurt. So God says, I'm going to keep you at a stoplight so you don't hurt yourself. Because if you don't have the right maturity, you may not handle it. If you don't have the right growth, you may not handle it. If you don't know the right tactics, you may not handle it. You know about David, don't you? Maybe you don't know about him. A young man. He's busy tending his father's sheep and goats. Writing songs. The prophet Samuel comes looking at his big brother. The, the one of them was, was big. He was buff. And, and, and Samuel, say, uh, Samuel says uh, to Jesse, I think this is the next king of Israel. God says to, to Samuel, don't, don't look on appearance. I'm interested in the heart. Keep looking, Samuel. Keep looking. And then Jesse has to say, ah, you know, there is this son of mine. Uh, I mean, he's small and everything. But uh, maybe let's try him. And he was brought, and God says, that's the one that I want. And you would think that he would be king right away. But no, he sends his brother's food. He sees this giant making fun of the people of Israel. And instead of sitting as a king, this young man, David, is busy fighting giants. And Saul says, you know what? I like this young man. I'm going to put him a part of my administration. He joins the administration. Saul becomes jealous, wants to kill David. And now David is running uh, like, 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 like a fugitive. He's running like oh, one of the people on the most wanted list. But yet God has chosen him to be king. But why? Watch this. Why is God allowing him to go through all of these difficulties and, and challenges and, and struggles? Because God, God was qualifying him for next. That is why you have got to appreciate the struggles in your life. You may feel and you may be qualified. You may have the degree. In fact, you, you might have the physique. You, you may have the money. <laughs> you may have the capability. But that's not what's important. What's important is the qualification process, Elder Donald. That God is putting you through. Because God understands better than you and I. Because he knows that what matters most is not our capability. <laughs> what, are, what matters most is our ability to trust him no matter what is happening. And unless we get to the place we say, God, it is not about what I do. It is not about where I come from. It is not about my family uh, uh, lineage. It is not about my pedigree. It is not about my fame. It is not about my degree. Until we come to that place, we are often unusable for God. Because what God is trying to do is that he's trying to process you before he can install you in the position. Let me just read that one more time so somebody can appreciate this. Because uh, uh, me and Pastor Sam, we believe that repetition deepens impression. So let me replay this a little bit so you can, you can appreciate it. God uses a qualification process before you are installed in position. So if it is not coming, don't worry. If it's not coming, don't cry. If it's not coming, don't lose hope. Your installation is coming. There will be a time when Saul dies. There will be a time when Moses dies. There will be an opportunity God is going to make. And you're going to just slide in there easily. And you're going to be ready for the situation. Because God is not interested in putting you in a situation that you cannot be effective in. God is interested that when you get the job, you make a difference. When you get the person, 
you grow. When you enter the community, you are a, a blessing to the community. When you, you get the degree, you're able to use it correctly. You don't give a baby a Ferrari. You give a baby a stroller. <laughs> are, we, are we together? Because <laughs> a baby can handle a stroller, but a baby cannot handle a Ferrari. And that's where some of us are. Uh, we are at a baby stage. And so God is saying, I'm looking out for you, my son. I'm looking out for you, for you, my daughter. The Ferrari is coming. Just allow me to develop you and to grow you. Watch this now. When you go to the restaurant, you look on the menu. And you choose your favorite drink. Perhaps you like an espresso or you like a latte or a mocha. I don't know what you like to drink when you go to Starbucks or your favorite coffee coffee store. You pick something on the menu. But once you pick it, it doesn't come to you right away. It must be boiled. It must be mixed. And once it has been prepared, then it's brought to you. Some of you are like a menu item at a restaurant. You are qualified. You, you, you are good. It's just that God needs to bake you. God needs to cook you. God needs to mix you before he can present you. Amen, somebody. Here it is. Because what God is aiming for in the qualification process is to transform you. That's what God is after. And I want you to see, in, a, in our text, we have transformation going on right here. You may not see it, but let me point it out to you. The name Joshua represents transformation. Let me just tell you a little bit. In, in the Bible, names are very important. And oftentimes, people would have name changes in the Bible. Abram changed to Abraham. Jacob changed to Israel. And often the change of name represented a change of situation and circumstance. Even if the circumstance had not changed. Okay, you didn't get that, so let me replay that. The change of name represented a change of circumstance, even though the situation had not changed. Mm, you didn't get it. So let me try it this way. <laughs> when you look at Optimus Prime, oftentimes Optimus Prime is just a truck. But when a situation comes that requires Optimus Prime to exercise his muscles, then he transforms. Uh, then he looks different. He's able to handle the situation in a much better, better way. Are we together? So in a lot of ways, when God changed the name of a person, he, they did not look different. The situation did not change. But God prepared them to handle life at a much better pace. And when they were prepared like Abraham, he had a son. And when they were prepared like Jacob, he was able to wrestle God and to, to make things right with his brother. And therefore, a lot of times that is what God is after transformation. So names in the Bible represented a change of character, a change of a situation. And so watch this. Watch this. If you are sleeping and closing your eyes right now, you got to wake up because this is when the sermon is going to take off. <laughs> Notice what the text says. These were the names of the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Hosea the son of Nun, Joshua. Did you catch it? Joshua, before Joshua, was called Hosea. Hosea means salvation. Joshua means Yahweh saves. Okay, it's not taken off, but let me make it take off. And I want you to see when the name was changed. The name was changed from Hosea to Joshua when they went to spy out the land. And you know that in the land there were giants. You know that in the land there were difficulties. And God looked at Joshua and Caleb, those young men who had faith. 
They looked at the giants and they said, you know what? The giants are not going to get us down. The giants are not going to beat us. We have God on our side. Therefore, Moses said, this young man believes that God is going to save him. He doesn't think that he's going to save and defeat the giants in the land by his own strength. But he has faith in God. He wasn't worried about the Anakims. He wasn't worried about the giants. Joshua said, God is with me. God has my back. See, don't face next alone. Face next tethered to faith in God's saving ability. Those amens were very malnourished and underfed. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you to say it one more time like you ate breakfast this morning. Don't face next alone. Face next tethered to faith in God's saving ability. That is why God could say, Joshua is my man. Because Joshua ain't going alone. He's going with me. Joshua is my man because as he wields the sword, he's not going there alone. He knows that I'm giving his arm muscles the ability to, to, to slice and dash enemy combatants. God could see Joshua is my man because as he's commanding the army, he doesn't do it because he's the best man or he doesn't do it because he has more power than the rest of them. No, he, do, he does it in humility knowing that he's leading on behalf of God. Joshua is my man. And to me, you are not qualified for next until you know that God saves. Ooh. You see, if you go into your job every morning believing that God is going to carry you Believing that when you struggle with your co-workers, God is going to carry you, then you're qualified. If you say, I'm going to enter this relationship, not because I like the person, not because the person believes like I do, but because God has transformed me and God has helped me to handle my anger, God has helped me to handle my, 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 my lack of discipline, then you are ready, qualified. If you say, I'm going to preach this sermon, not because I have studied Greek and Hebrew, but because God is working in my life, then you're qualified. If you say, I want this money, not because I want to be the richest man in Indonesia, but because I want to help babies. I want God to do something with me. You're ready. You're not qualified until you believe God's saving ability. And that's what God wants for some of us. To get to the place. God, I believe in you. God, I believe in your power. God, I believe that it's not on my own strength. God, I, I may not know where I'm going next. It looks, it looks bleak to me. I don't get it, but Lord, 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 we are together. One of the things that I used to love to do when I was young Brother Malolo was to watch TV. When I was young, we only watched TV. We only watched movies. My parents were very strict. They didn't allow us to watch a lot of movies. But in our day and age, TVs are, are, are more versatile. They, they can do more things. You don't only watch on a TV, you, you can do a, a, an extra monitor with, with the TV and, and you can work. And, and that's how I work. I connect my laptop to the extra monitor and I'm writing the sermon. I'm, I'm able to look at the Bible notes and I, I'm writing. And some of you get on your TV and you, you Netflix and you search for stuff. If a TV has capability to do many, many things... What about God? 
God saves, brothers and sisters, in everything, in every situation, in every struggle. You're confused, God has wisdom. You are in pain, God has healing. You are diseased, God has restoration. You are sinful, God has forgiveness. And so, brother and sister, if we're going to go next, we better go with God. Believing in God. Today, I want to talk to somebody. You're struggling with something that has died. But today you're like, you know what, God? Thank you that death means next. And you're saying to yourself, I want to embrace next. Anybody like that? Let me see by show of hands. If you raise your hands, I want you to stand. If you've raised your hand, please stand. If you raise your hand. Somebody today is wondering if the situation is going to change. If it is going to get better. I'm here to let you know that it is. But you've got to believe in God's power. And you're saying, Pastor, I want faith in God's power. I want faith to believe that no matter what, God has my back. God is going to take care of me. God is going to see me through this situation. Anybody like that? All right. Hmm. The last thing I want to say today. Joshua means God saves. The Bible says, and you will have a son and you shall call his name Jesus. Because he will save people from their sins. Jesus saves. And for somebody, that is what next needs to begin from. Believing that Jesus saves. You've never given your life to Jesus. You've never accepted him as personal Lord and Savior of your life. You never said, you know what, I'm going to be true to this. I'm going to be committed to my Lord and Savior. I want to start the journey. Anybody like that? I want to start the journey. Those of you who raised your hand, I want you to see me after the service, please. If you raised your hand about the one about Jesus, please see me after service. I want to talk to you in a special way. But every head is bowed, every set of eyes is closed as we pray at this moment. Mighty God, thank you because of the opportunity to reflect and to hear your word today. Father God, we want to be qualified for next. And we know that that only begins when we believe that you can save. I ask you, Lord, that you would help a brother and a sister who is struggling over what has died. I ask you, Lord, to give them faith to believe that death simply means next. I pray, Lord, for a brother and a sister who is struggling to believe in your saving ability. They are doubting that the situation can change. I ask you, Father, to give faith, to give grace. I ask you, Lord, to give energy and to guide and to lead forward. And Father, there's somebody who says, you know, Jesus saves. I want to believe that he can save me. And today, Father, somebody has raised a hand wanting the salvation Jesus can provide. I ask you, Father, that you will seal that decision and strengthen. Lord, for the rest of us, we ask you that you guide us and lead us forward and help us, Lord, to love you more than anything else. In the awesome, wonderful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. God bless you. I know God spoke to you. I know you want to respond. But you may not know how. You may not know when. Let me tell you the how. There's number on the screen. Reach out to us and we're going to show you the next house.
Let me tell you when. Right now. Right now. Don't delay. Today, if you hear your voice, today, today, respond. Perhaps the Lord also has impacted you and you would like to give and partner with us in ministry. We have an account number on the screen. Kindly give. Whatever gift, whatever amount, trust me, we will be more than grateful and happy for it. And it's going to help us to proclaim the love of Jesus. Until then, take care. God bless you. Thank you.